Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's good to see each and every one of you again this evening. It's good to be back with the people of God. Man, did we have an awesome time yesterday in service. I really enjoyed service time, the worship, the, the ministry, the preaching, uh, everything, the fellowship, you know, just an awesome time in God. And I'm going to tell you, every time I go to the house of God, I always come away with a <clears throat> stronger sense of faith, a stronger sense of fellowship, and a stronger sense of peace. Because each time that, that I go and I watch God move on the lives of people that are going through things, that are going through situations and circumstances, I'm going to tell you tonight, my friends, my mind is blown at the fact that God can reach down in a person's situation and circumstances and speak to their hearts and their minds. But the main thing is tonight is, is that we have to be obedient. Number one, I have to be obedient as a minister of God, whether I'm pastoring, whether I'm preaching, whether I'm teaching, whether I'm doing devotion, whether I'm witnessing or fellowshipping. You know, Brother Stewart, I have to be willing to, to hear the voice of God and, and follow what God has given me. And, and, and it amazes me, Sister Crystal, that each service, it seems like lately, that people have come up after service and, and, and just flabbergasted at the fact that, that God was speaking directly to their heart. God was speaking directly to their situation or their circumstances. And Brother Danny, you know, that just amazes me because, see, that's the number one thing that that brings my heart peace, that brings my heart joy. When Tonight I want to talk to you about finding peace. My friend, I'm going to tell you, when, when God confirms his love for you, in, in the sense that, Sister Cindy, that he speaks to you directly, that he, that he speaks to your situations or what's going on in your heart and what's going on in your mind. Now, Sometimes, Brother Danny, God is speaking into our hearts and our minds and giving us answers to the things that we've been asking questions for. Sometimes God speaks into our hearts and minds just about the circumstance that we're going through, and he encourages us, and he gives us strength, and he gives us direction, and he gives us guidance. But sometimes God is also speaking into our hearts and minds, Sister Angela, and 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 showing us the areas of our life that 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 in our hearts and minds that we've hid from everyone else that we've hid from the world, God knows those areas too, and He speaks to them as well. So God is speaking to every one of us in a different way about different things through the message. But it just really gives me peace and comfort to it, to know that Brother Danny, that God, the God of Heaven who created all things, the heavens. The word of God says that all things were made by him, Sister Brenda, and without him was not anything made that was made. You know, I'm truly blessed and truly thankful in knowing that God did all of that, my friend. Sister Tammy, ain't it amazing that the God who did all of that takes the time to speak to you in your moment, in your situation, in your circumstance? That amazes me tonight, and it brings me such peace and such comfort in knowing that in those moments, in those hours, in those situations, Sister Brenda, that God is going to speak to me in a way that's going to encourage me, that's going to strengthen me, that's going to guide me, that's going to help me along the journey. I, I want you to think about that tonight. Out of the billions of people that are in the world, hear me tonight, my friend, out of the billions of people that are in the world tonight, knowing that when, when you hear the message, whether it's being preached at Sunday, whether it's being taught on Wednesday, whether it's devotion, whether it's a witness, whether whatever it may be, ain't it amazing when God speaks to you in that moment and, and, and speaks to you? There's no way that Pastor Perry could know everything that all of you guys are going through. There's no way that, Tammy, that I could know what you're going through. You and I have never met in person, or you and I, Brother Danny, we've never met in person. But God, God knows exactly who you are and what you're thinking and what you're feeling and where you're at, you know, not only does God know the days that you're on the right road, but he also knows the days that you're on the wrong road, huh? 
And, and, and you say, well, I don't want God to see me on the wrong road. I'm embarrassed. I'm overwhelmed. But, but my friend, I want you to know tonight, when God sees you on that wrong road or on that wrong choice or that wrong path, God is going to come and seek you out. And he's going to try to get you back to where you belong. That's the reason why that he brings that power of conviction to tug at your heart and to tug at your mind, to tug at your life, so that you will either come back to him if you've drifted away, or if you've never known him, that you will have the opportunity to get to know him and be set free tonight. My friend, such peace and comfort in knowing that, that when I think about that scripture that says the, that God's ears are open unto the righteous people of God tonight, my friend, ain't that amazing that God's ears are open to you and I? That he hears us in the midst of our situation, that he hears us as we're calling out and asking for help that he hears us and he responds to that tonight in a way that we can find the answers that we need, my friend. You know, I think about all the friends that I've had in life along my journey. I think about those that, you know, that sometimes I have friends that, that step up and, and do what they need to do, and sometimes I don't. But, you know, here's the thing tonight, my friends. My friends are limited. You know, I've got a, I've got a friend in, in this earth that I'm really close to, and I know that he cares about me, and I care about him. But you know, he's limited in, in what he can do tonight, Brother Stewart. But but and he's limited in the knowledge that he has about what's going on in my life and all these different things. But I'm just so amazed at the peace that I find that as I'm sitting down reading the Word of God or I'm hearing the Word of God, how that God speaks to me directly and that gives me peace and comfort in knowing that that i am that important to the god of this universe that i am that important to someone tonight my friend and i want you to know that's the same thing for you you are that important to god you're so important to god as a matter of fact the word of god says that God leaves the 99 and goes to find the one that is lost, the one that has went astray, the one that is out there in the darkness and the pain and the suffering. He comes and looks for them and finds them and brings them back into the ark of safety, into the covenant of safety, to the house of refuge tonight, my friend. And, and you know what, my friend, tonight, I, I'm so glad that, Brother Danny, that, that God loves me even to the point that even though there's times that I disappoint him, and yes, Pastor Perry has times in his life just like you where that I don't do things perfect and I do disappoint God along the way. Now, I'm not saying that I go out here and commit all kinds of sin, my friend, uh, but sometimes Pastor Perry may not do things exactly the way that, that God planned for him. Sometimes as man... Sister Crystal, I may mess up in some of the things that God is trying to relay through me, and I might get in God's way, and I may relay it in the way that's not the way God intended. So many different things, my friend. But I'm so glad tonight, while along my journey, and I've been doing this for a while, along my journey, there have been people who've absolutely loved me, there's been people that told me they loved me. And, but Sister Angela, uh, along the journey, many of those people no longer follow me or no longer uh, support or, or, or are in the ministry with me. They, For whatever reason, they drifted apart and drifted away. And I know that's what the devil does tonight, my friend. The devil will cause divisions in our relationships. <clears throat> and that's what he tries to do to each and every one of us tonight. I want you to hear me tonight, my friend. The devil tries to work on the hearts of all mankind, on every Christian, on every church, in every avenue, and he tries to cause division amongst the brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, while it saddens me that I see that happening so many times within a church or within the community or within the family of God, there's one thing that brings me peace, my friend, tonight. Do you know there's nothing the devil can do huh, to take me out of the hand of God? See, that's what the Word of God says. Neither death, nor height, nor power, nor principality, nothing can take me out of the hand of God. 
And see, here's the thing. God, in, in, in our relationship, now, I may drift from God somewhere along the road. I may. I don't plan to, but I might. But the good thing about it tonight, my friend, is, is Sister Brenda, God will never drift away from you in the relationship. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is one. The word of God said, No greater love have any man than this, than one that would lay down his life for a friend. Here's the thing tonight, and, and I'm a veteran of the, of the military, and, and Brother Danny, I went and I fought for this country, and, and I was willing to put my life on the line, but I want you to hear me tonight, my friend. When I was fighting, I, I was fighting for those people that I knew. I was fighting for those people that loved me, and I loved them. I didn't know other people out there tonight, my friend. So I, I, I can't say that I was over there fighting for every person out there because I didn't know them. But here's the thing I can say about Jesus. When Jesus came and died for all of mankind on the cross of Calvary, I want you to hear me tonight. My friend, he not only died for the Jews, but he died for the Gentiles. He not only died for the saved, but he died for the lost. He not only died for those who lived in that area, but those who lived all around the world. He died for the African American. He died for the Caucasian. He died for the Indian. He died for the Mexican. He died for all of the people tonight. My friend, the word of God tells us that he laid down his life for all of mankind, my friend. See, and, and that's the thing about it tonight. So when we try to compare Jesus to someone else, again, those people who are out there fighting and putting their all out there are out there putting it all out there for the people they know and they love and they care about. But there's people they don't know that doesn't always get included in that sense or, or that frame of mind. But it brings me peace in knowing that no matter who you are tonight, no matter who they are tonight, Sister Cindy, he died for all. Doesn't that bring peace to your heart and mind tonight? Because I know that here and Sister Cindy driving through Fredericksburg, Virginia, I pass by homeless people on the streets everywhere. Uh, I, you know, and, and, and the thing about it, I not only pass by the homeless, but there's there's prostitutes out there, there's drug dealers out there, there's people strung out on the addictions out there. I mean, there's all sorts of people out there tonight, my friend. And Brother Danny, he died for them. They don't have to stay in their sin. See, that brings me peace. That brings me joy. And, and the reason why that does tonight, my friend, that reminds me, Sister Tammy, that if somewhere's along the journey, no matter who we are, no matter what happens in our life, if somewhere's along the journey, the enemy convinces us to follow after the desires of the flesh and draws us away from the plan of God or the will of God. Or maybe the enemy is taking you down a road tonight and you've drifted away from God. I am thankful tonight in knowing my peace rests assured that God's love does not stop for me, but God still desires for me either to be saved and set free from that darkness if I've never known him, or he desires for me to return, my friend, tonight so that I can continue walking that journey with him. Wow, ain't that amazing? The word of God says that it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all come to repentance tonight. My friend, maybe you've got a loved one. Maybe you've seen a loved one or a friend or a neighbor or a co-worker Man, they've got so wrapped up into the simple things of this world. Doesn't it bring you peace? Even Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm, I don't have peace because they're in sin, but it brings me peace in knowing that there's still an opportunity for them. There's still an opportunity for them to be saved. You say, preacher, I don't know, man. They've got so wrapped up in sin. They've went so deep in darkness. They've got done so much, preacher. I just don't know about that. I want you to know something, not my friend. I remember a scripture. The word of God says that when Jesus came over and into the place where the man who was among the tombs, 
The people didn't want him. They wanted nothing to do with him. He was vexed with so many demons that he didn't even have clothes on. They couldn't bind him. They couldn't chain him. They couldn't do anything with him tonight, my friend. And I guarantee you that the people of that area gave up on him. I guarantee you they wanted him to live among the tombs and away from them because they saw no hope, no opportunity. They believed that nothing would never change him, nothing would ever save him, nothing would help him. But I am so glad that one day that Sister Margaret, he had a meeting with the Master. I'm so glad that one day that our Savior Jesus pass by his way. I want you to know, my friend, it wasn't by accident. It wasn't by coincidence. Jesus went there to deliver that man from his condition. I am so glad in knowing I have peace in my heart tonight in knowing that no matter how lost they are, no matter how much the devil has them wrapped up, bound and chained, no matter how far they've drifted in the darkness, all they've got to do is have a meeting with the Savior. All they got to do is let Jesus pass by and have a connection, my friend. The Word of God said that when the people came, they saw this man clothed and in his right mind. Brother Philip, I want you to know, not only was this man lost, but man, he was possessed. The Word of God said that when Jesus began to speak, he said, he speak to the demons. The demons called themselves legion, meaning there was thousands of demons inside of this man. But Jesus set him free. The Word of God says he cast them out into the swine that was in the countryside. And the swine went and jumped over the cliff and killed themselves. My friend, tonight, I want you to know you may have a loved one. You may have a son, a daughter, a grandchild, a neighbor, a wife, a husband that you've been praying for and the world is telling you to give up because there's no hope. I want you to have peace in your heart and know it that it's still possible through Jesus Christ tonight. It's still possible. Brother Jeff, I still believe that God is working on my children. I still believe that God is working on some of my family. I still believe that God is working on some of my neighbors. I still believe that God is working on my co-workers. I still believe that God is working even on my enemies tonight. You know tonight the Word of God tells us that when we are pleasing to the Lord that God can even even make us have peace with our enemies. That's right, Sister Sheila. We should never give up on them tonight, my friend. We should not stop praying for them. You say, well, preacher, I've been trying. I've been witnessing. I've been talking to them. They're just not listening. I've been inviting. They're just not listening. My friend, I want you to know tonight, I want you to follow the leading of the Spirit now. I want you to hear me. I don't want you to Bible thump that person and try to get him into church because Sister Crystal, that's not what's going to get him in church. But my friend, I want you to continue to show them the love of God. I want you to continue to show them the characteristics of God. I want you to continue to show them the forgiveness of God, the peace of God, the joy of God, and the love of God, my friend, because I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. Every time that you connect with that individual, Brother Philip, if you are being led by the Lord and their hearts being prepared, there's going to be a seed planted. And I want to give you some peace tonight, my friend. Just because you're not seeing the seed grow into a tree or develop the fruit that you're looking for, doesn't mean that one day it won't grow. I believe that along my journey... 
Brother Frank, I believe with all of my heart that along my journey, I've been preaching and teaching and witnessing and all of this tonight. I believe that in my journey, that Brother Philip, there's going to be people that I may never see Brother Rocky come to the house of the Lord. I may never see him give their life to Jesus, but I believe that even after I'm dead and gone, that many of those seeds are still going to bloom because God is going to make sure they get watered and God's going to give an increase and many of them will continue to grow and many of them will find Jesus long after Pastor Perry is gone. My friend, I want to give you peace tonight in knowing that the seeds that you are planting are not being planted in vain. Woo! Finding peace in knowing the power of and the joy of planting that seed tonight. And I'm not talking about money tonight, my friend. I'm not talking about giving finances, but I'm talking about the seed of the Word of God, that you're planting the Word of truth in their heart and their life, and it's going to take root, and it's going to grow, my friend. That's right, Brother Stewart. God promised that His Word would not go out and come back void. I want you to know tonight, my friend, keep planting Keep watering, keep witnessing, keep praying, keep asking. My friend, just keep on keeping on tonight and you never know the day and the hour when the church house door may open up and that person you've been praying for, that person you've been witnessing to, that person you've been inviting may just walk through the door and come down and sit next to you on the altar, hey, on the seat there in the church. You never know when you may see him come down and kneel at an old-fashioned altar and give their heart to Jesus, my friend. You and I have got to have the peace and joy in mind and know that God still is in the saving business, my friend. See, that's the peace that I haven't got tonight. I have that peace in knowing that when God called me to preach and teach and be a pastor, whoo! That God had a work to be done. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Brother Danny, every place that God has allowed us to be a part of, I know that there has been a piece of me that still has lingered in the hearts and the minds of people because I know the power of the anointing word of God does not vanish away, my friend. It gets rooted and grounded in their heart and every now and then God will come along and water that seed. Every now and then God will come along and remind them of what the preacher had to say. Every now and then when they're out there in the world and they're drifting away, every now and then they'll remember that message that Pastor Perry preached Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday or on devotion or they'll remember a time that we sat down and chatted. My friend, I'm going to tell you tonight, they're going to remember the times that you took the time to love them and encourage them. They'll remember the times, Brother uh, Al, when you took the time to show them forgiveness and grace and mercy. They're going to remember those days because I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. I can still remember as a child growing up in the churches there in southern West Virginia I can still remember being in the classrooms there at Bruno Free Will Baptist Church in the classrooms at Bruno Church of God I can still remember being in the classrooms at Davin Baptist Church and in Gilman Bottom House of God I can still remember that tabernacle there in Gilman Bottom where Sister Hurley taught a Sunday school go back there in the Sunday school class I can still remember as a child as we were putting on a play that we knelt down by our seats and prayed for a person in our church because something drastic had taken place my friend seeds were planted and they're still growing today see that's the peace that I have because see what happens tonight, Sister Brenda, is the enemy's trying to come by. And, and he's trying to steal our joy in the work that we're doing for God. 
He's trying to strip away our peace and our understanding tonight. He's trying to strip away our confidence in the Word of God and the power of God tonight. I'm going to tell you something. There is nothing greater than our God, nothing impossible for Him, and the very Word of His mouth breathes life back into that that was dead beyond a shadow of a doubt. Tonight, God is planting some seeds in some hearts tonight. And he wants to plant them. He wants them to grow. There are some seeds tonight that God is watering right now. And my friend, I'm going to tell you, God is watering the seed that's in your heart so that it will continue to grow stronger and stronger and stronger. Because why, Sister Tammy? Because God loves you that much. God loved you so much that he saved you, Sister Cindy. But God continues to love you in such a way that he wants you to continue to grow. He wants to continue to see you have peace and strength and joy. He wants to see you be able to rise up above all the things the devil's been beating down upon you. My friend, tonight I want you to know God wants you to have victory tonight. God wants you to find peace and joy. God wants you to have happiness. I believe that there's some of us tonight, my friend, that need to be and say, Lord, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation as King David did. Because I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. We should not get weary in well-doing, as the Word of God said. We should not get weary, but we should continue to fight. We should continue to worship. We should continue to witness and rejoice with all joy in our hearts tonight because we are on the winning side. The book of Proverbs, in chapter 16, talks about a few things, how that man sees it and how that God sees it tonight. Proverbs 16 and 1 says, The preparations of the heart may belong to man, but the answers of the tongue are from the Lord. He said tonight, he said, if you'll listen all that stuff that, that you've got stirred up in your heart that, that has come from the flesh, that's come from the things of the world. He says, if you listen to the voice of God, if you listen to the word of God, it can speak into your heart tonight and change that heart. It can take that blackened heart and make it as white as snow. It can take all of that ill will, uh, all of that hardship, all of that grudge, all of that grief, all of that pain that is down in your heart, my friend, and begin to mend it and heal it and make it whole. He can turn it into a heart of love, my friend, no matter what you've been through tonight. He says, All the ways of man are pure. In whose eyes? In his own. Huh? But the Lord weighs the spirits. See, here's the thing tonight, my friend. I want to hear God's voice because I know tonight that if I listen to the voice of man, if I listen to the voice of the world, if I listen to my own voice and not God's voice, my friend, I will get myself in trouble. I will justify my actions and end up drifting into a situation that I don't need to be in tonight, my friend. But I'm so glad tonight that while the Word of God says there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is destroyed. I want you to know tonight, while the world may think that they're justified in their sins and their actions, I want you to know tonight, God will weigh the truth. And if you will listen to him tonight, he will show you the path clearly in which you need to walk. He says, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. The Lord has made all for himself. Yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. He said, every one proud in heart is an abomination to God. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. He said, in mercy and in truth, atonement is provided for iniquity. And by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. 
See, here's what I know tonight, my friends. I don't have to go around, number one, I don't have to go around trying to prove that God is real and God is true because I got news for you tonight. We already know that he is. I don't have to go around tonight trying to prove Sister Crystal while this one's wrong and that one's right and this one's wrong and that one's right because God has already determined all of that already. As a matter of fact, the Word of God goes on to say uh, uh, that, that God keeps His promises. He said, God is not slack concerning His promises as some men count slackness. I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. The Word of God said, They which slow to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap corruption, but they that sow to the, that, but they that sow to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. But they that sow to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. I want you to know something tonight, my friend. If you are sowing to the Spirit, if you are doing the will of God, my friend, tonight, you will reap the blessings of God. You will reap life everlasting. You will find the joy and peace in God. You will know the way to heaven. And you will hear Him say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You do not have to be concerned about what the world is thinking and what the world is doing. Brother Philip, I have peace in my heart and mind tonight about the things that God tells me to preach and teach. I have peace in my heart and mind in knowing that my path is leading to heaven. I have peace tonight. Why? Because my friend, I am sowing unto the Spirit because let me tell you, I am listening to the voice of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit tonight. And Brother Timothy, I have peace in my heart and mind, knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that heaven is going to be my home. See, that's the peace that I have tonight. I mentioned this scripture earlier, but it says here in verse 7, it says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he says, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. He said, better is a little with righteousness than vast revenues with un without justice. He said, a man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. Divination is on the lips of the king. His mouth must not transgress in judgment. Honest weights and scales are the Lord's, and all the weights in the bag are his work. He said, it is an abomination for kings to commit wickedness. For a throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him who speaks what is right. A messenger of death is the king's wrath, but a wise man will appease it. In the light of the king's face is life, and his favor is like a cloud of the latter rain. Why do I read all those things tonight and talk about peace at the same time? Let me tell you something, my friend. God is trying to show us tonight what the world has for answers and what the world is trying to cling to in order to find peace and safety tonight, my friend. But I'm going to tell you, he said, I have a better answer tonight if you'll just trust me and lean upon me. If you look at all of these things, he says, the man's heart or the man's mind can deceive them and lead them away and lead them into destruction. But the mind of God and the will of God and the plan of God is for you to have victory and peace and joy. My friend tonight, this brings me peace in knowing that God has an answer for all things tonight and God tries to warn us where we're coming up short and show us the way that we might receive the blessings and the plans that he has for us. See, I have peace in knowing, Brother Philip, that there is not an error in Scripture. I believe every Scripture from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation. I don't doubt one Scripture. I don't doubt one chapter or one book. I don't doubt even one word within God's Word tonight, my friend. Why? It brings me peace in knowing that the word of God was God-breathed. That God spoke his word into the hearts and minds of men. And these men penned the words of God. And we have the divine spoken word of the Lord penned in 66 books. And my friend tonight, you can have peace in knowing that you can read these scriptures. You can study these scriptures. And you can trust them tonight, my friend. Huh? 
You can trust his word. You say, well, preacher, I, I, I've heard so-and-so or this and this and this. I want you to know you can trust the entire word of God. You can't trust the word of man. You can't trust the books of man. You can't trust the ideals of man. But you can trust the 66 books of God's holy word, my friend. And that brings me peace. Because, see... While many people in the world are looking for peace, our devotion tonight says this. I want to read this to you tonight. It says, he knows men who would write a check for a million dollars right now if it would cause them to find peace. Do you know that, Brother Jeff, that many people are chasing fame and fortune? Because they believe that once they obtain it, that they won't have problems and they'll have peace in their life. I want you to know, for many people, it's caused them more pain and suffering than it has peace and joy. There's millionaires, there's billionaires out there tonight that even though they have more money than they know what to do with, they still do not possess peace in their heart. Why? Because they're looking for it in all the wrong places. Do you know that the word of God says, not money, my friend, but he says the love of money, meaning that you love it so much that you will do anything to obtain it. He said the love of money is the root of all evil. My friend, tonight there's only one place that you're going to find true peace and joy. There's only one place that you're going to find contentment and understanding. There's only one place that you're going to find freedom and victory. And my friend, that is in the Word of God tonight. And my friend, I don't know what answer you need. I don't know what you need God to do for you. But I'm going to tell you what, I will challenge you to do this. If you will spend more time digging and reading and studying the Word of God than you do everything else, I promise you that you're going to find yourself being stronger, that you're going to find more peace, that you're going to find more understanding, that you're going to have more joy, that you're going to be able to walk when the devil tries to attack you. He's not going to be able to knock you down and steal your joy. He's not going to be able to divide you from man, the, the, the church, from, from the people of God and from God himself. Why? Because you'll know the word of God enough that you can be anchored upon the solid rock. Do you know tonight, Jesus is the rock of our salvation. If you'll understand who Jesus is, then you'll understand why this word is so important for us to know. Jesus is the word made flesh. He said, in the beginning, what? Let's look at that over in the book of John. Let's look at John real quick and, and read it. John chapter 1, my friend, tonight. I, I want you to read it with me because I quoted a lot of times. I just want us to read it. Word for word tonight, my friend. Look at this tonight. In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was what? Was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And He was in the beginning with God. Now, we know that this is speaking about Jesus Christ Himself and the deity of Christ. I'm going to tell you something, my friend. If we know Jesus and we know the Word, we know the two cannot be separated. So therefore, the Word and Christ are one, and we stand upon that solid foundation. It says, All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Now, I want you to understand something tonight, my friend. If you want to know victory, if you want to know power and strength and peace and joy, I'm going to tell you, you will find it within the Scripture. Huh? You will find it in the Word of God tonight, my friend. I don't care what you need tonight. You can find the answers 
in God's word. Our devotion says that millions are searching for peace tonight. And as they look around, they're having a hard time finding that peace in the world. Because all they see in the world is pain and hurt and suffering. All they see is all of the lies that's being told. As a matter of fact, the world, my friend, Brother Rocky, there's going to come a time when the world is going to have a false sense of peace, the Word of God says. The Word of God says that there's going to come a false peace. And my friend, I'm going to tell you, if we go back and we look at the days of Noah, the Word of God says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of the Lord. Let me tell you something tonight, my friend. In the days of Noah, they thought that they had peace and safety and they were rising up and eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. They were just enjoying the, what they were not doing. They were not hearing the words of God that was warning them through the voice of Noah about the coming flood, about the coming judgment, about the coming destruction. And they held on to this false peace, my friend, instead of anchoring in the real hope and peace in God tonight, knowing that he is able to take care of us through anything that you and I face tonight. Right now, there's a lot of people in a lot of places that, that have anchored themselves upon a false hope that has given them a false peace. I hope and pray tonight that you have not anchored your peace and your hope in something that is not genuinely the truth of God's word. But I hope and pray tonight, my friend, that you are heeding the voice of God. That you are heeding the strength and the peace of God. I'm hoping tonight, my friend, that, that your joy, your peace, your faith, all is anchored not in a preacher, not in Pastor Perry, not in other preachers, not in teachers, not in people, but my friend, I hope and pray that it's all anchored in the Word of God and upon God's truth and God's plan for you tonight, my friend. Because the world will fail you. People will fail you. The government, your relationships in this world, your jobs, your homes, your cars, your money, all of these things will fail you at times, my friend. But I'm going to tell you something tonight. There is one thing that will never fail no matter what we face, and that's the truth of God's Word. I find peace in knowing that I can rest and stand upon the Word of God tonight and I do not have to live in fear of finding out that it is a bad foundation. I do not have to worry tonight, my friend. Why? Because the word of God will never fail. Huh? Nothing. He said not one jot, not one tittle will pass away from his word. But it has been established forever and ever. If you want to have real peace, then my friend, get anchored in the word of God tonight. Let us pray. Father God, as we come to you tonight, I am truly grateful and thankful, Father God, for the word that you have given us, for the power and the peace and the strength that we know, Father God, while people may fail us, while things in this world may fail us, while governments and jobs and plans and friends and relationships may fail us, we are find peace in knowing that your word will never fail. And I pray tonight, Father God, that if there's someone out there tonight who feels like, well, preacher, you say God's word won't fail, but it's failed me. I want you to know tonight, my friend, God's word has not failed you. Somewhere along the journey, you may have, may have got a misinterpretation or somebody may have led you wrong about believing something in that word that wasn't true. But I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. As we pray tonight, I just pray that, God, that you will open their heart and their mind, Father God, and let them see that your word has been established and that you will not 
fail them, nor will your word. But Father God, help us to open our hearts and our minds to see the clear truth of your word so we may be anchored upon a true hope and not a false hope. That we may be anchored upon the real truth and not our made up truth. Father God, let us not be walking in a seem right way, but let us be walking in the way of truth tonight, Father God. Let us not walk in the ways of man, but let us walk in your will, Father God. I just pray tonight, Father God, each and every individual that is listening in, I pray that right now, that number one, Father God, that they understand that you love them, that you care about them, and that you want them to rise above their situation. Help them to understand, Father God, that you want them to be saved and set free, that you want them to know joy and peace and comfort and strength tonight. My friend, I pray, Father God, that you would just help them, Father God. I know that right now that there are some that are sick and afflicted, some that are discouraged, some that are downtrodden. There are some that have been hurt, Father God, by people of the church. There are some that have been hurt by the world. There are some that have been hurt by their families and their friends and their neighbors. But Father God, tonight I pray that they understand that they can trust you. That Father God, that you are not the one hurting them and doing the damage to them, but it is the element of sin and the things of this world. Father God, help them to find peace in knowing you and your plan for them tonight. Father God, speak your word now that they might receive it. Speak it that it may be so according to your will. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen. Thank you as always for praying with me and for me. Please make sure that you click the share button tonight and share tonight's message. Invite people to listen. Invite people to share. Come back tomorrow night and be with me again at 9 o'clock for Winding Down with Pastor Perry. I love each and every one of you. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, everything that you do for the kingdom of God, I thank God for you tonight, my friend. And God loves you tonight and cares about all that you are doing and going through. Be blessed wherever you go. I pray that God goes with you. Be blessed in whatever you do. I pray that God protects you and watches over you. But my friends tonight, I'm praying that God will use every one of you to reach someone else for the gospel truth. Be blessed and have a wonderful night.